I reversed all trade in the world in Europa Universalis 4. The English Channel, Genoa, and Venice are all starting nodes now, with almost all of their value guaranteed to leave and head downstream towards Asia and the New World. This should no doubt create some interesting dynamics both at the start date and as the game progresses, and I am excited to see how it looks. If you're interested in trying the mod out for yourself, it is linked in the description, and uh, while you're down there, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content to come. Now, aside from the natives being gone, which we do pretty much every video, uh, the political map mode looks exactly the same. The map mode that we're looking at today, of course, is the trade map mode. Taking a look at the English channel, you can see here, uh, yeah, there's a lot of trade that is leaving this node. Venice and Genoa both exclusively losing trade, zero input, except for the local provinces. Meanwhile, over here in California, we have an end node. Same with Patagonia, Amazonas. Mexico is going to be a very powerful node. We're honestly looking at a very powerful new world in terms of trade, whereas Europe will be much less important. But you know how we find this out, right? We speed five and we unpause. This video is kindly sponsored by World of Warships. World of Warships is a free to play game on the PC featuring top notch graphics that are showcased over 40 unique maps, each with dynamic weather and a new texture and water effects that make the game even more visually stunning than ever. And at times even indistinguishable from real life. Playstyles can be flexible with choices ranging from battleships and destroyers to cruisers and even aircraft carriers. If you feel you're calling beneath the depths, you can even dive below in a submarine. There is new content released every single month and whether it be new ships in-game nations cosmetics or even altogether new classes there's always something keeping it fresh and to keep you coming back for just one more game in world of warships massive 12v12 arenas play the game as a lone wolf or squad up with the crew and set sail together there's fun to be had for all for my fellow nerds who crave more from a game than just fun action world of warships doubles essentially as a digital museum displaying breathtaking recreations of legendary vessels from the great war and the second world war there's also many blueprints and designs that were never realized in real life only to be recreated in game. Oh, and did I mention that the game is also available on consoles? Check out World of Warships right now using the link in the description and the pinned comment. And if you register using my code Bravo, you will get a huge starter pack to get you right into the fight. There's more details at the link in the description. So check it out for yourself. And again, a big thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Safe to say that England is not getting a whole lot of trade income. You can see down here, their balance is, um, yeah, it's pretty bad. Venice is still doing okay because they control most of the trade power in Venice, meaning a decent amount of the trade will actually stay there. Same thing over here. Most of the trade power is being used to collect, so it's not getting steered out, but you can see how much is going over here to Champagne. And then Champagne is promptly losing a ton to the Rhineland as well as uh, Bordeaux. Certain trade nodes like the ones over here in China are going to be hit or miss because some of them have a lot of incoming and some have a lot of outgoing. So like these two guys down here have a lot of incoming, whereas Beijing and Vanilla is a very strong semi end node. It is now very much an outgoing node. Like uh, take a look at Malacca and how much outgoing trade there is gonna get interesting i'm really curious especially after colonization gets going of course and 40 years in it looks like england is actually managing to make it happen uh leaning really hard into that tax meta they are uh, making most of their money from tax over half of their entire income is actually from tax so they are making it work Burgundy is dominating France, which uh, I'm not actually sure what is causing that. There is a lot of trade value up here. It actually looks like Burgundy is making quite a bit of money. See, between production and trade, they're making over half of their income from that. So I don't know. There's something to be said about that. But like, look at Venice, 1.3 ducats, 3.9 in Genoa. 40 years into the game, there's been some production development. It's just all leaving. Literally zero ducats in Beijing. Tragic. So when we take a look at the actual nodes, you can see here Champagne is the richest trade node in the world with Deccan, Vienna, and Burma. So it seems kind of random, honestly. It jumps around. You got one in Europe, India. One in Europe, Southeast Asia. Europe, India. <laughs> Europe, Europe, India. So it's jumping around quite a bit. And uh, once colonization gets moving, which it hasn't yet, we're going to see some interesting things as uh, production starts to ramp up over here in the New World. 1529, the Reformation is in full force here in Czechia as well as Northern Germany. But uh, what is not in full force is the colonial game. In fact, at this point, there is still zero colonies because nobody can afford them. The dishonorably excommunicated Fernando over here has taken Expo expansion, as has Portugal, but still nothing. England even went Expo expansion as well, but it just goes to show how important that trade money is to funding the colonies. Also, how about that France? Two provinces here, about to lose one to uh, Alençon. I want my Breton boys in the comments below. Let me know, how does it make you feel to know that the capital of the French Empire is in Brest? And despite the lack of trade income, we've got a Great Britain here who is united and has formed. The HRE has consolidated quite a bit and we got a Franconia and a Bavaria in the house. Bohemia and Hungary have both gotten quite strong as well as Austria. And uh, boy oh boy, we got a big old commonwealth on our hands. 
Hungary is a personal union under Austria, but Bohemia is still independent. However, Austria does have Milan. The Ottoman Mamluk rivalry continues, and it looks like the Ottomans are winning this time around. No surprise there. And I didn't mention this before, but Castile here does have Aragon and Naples as personal unions, so Castile is having a very solid game. The extra trade income doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot over here in East Asia. Korea has grown quite a bit. Um, Ashikaga and Japan is just a mess, though. We've actually got some Korea in the south there. Looks like Korea is actually beating up on the Ming as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what uh, what is to come here. Southeast Asia and Indonesia still a bit of a mess as well. Majapahit has finished up uh, Java, which is pretty cool. And Malacca has gotten over into Sumatra. Diviet has migrated to the south and is now Cambodia. And Indian Blobs does as Indian Blobs do. We've got Bengal, Bamanis, Delhi, and Malwa all pretty strong. And speaking of strong, my goodness, how about that Ethiopia? I always love seeing a strong Ethiopia. African nations continue to vie for power in their area. Kilwa down there, Congo in the central, and Jene slash Songhai up here in the Sahel. 80 some years in, and uh, Castile is the number one great power with Muscovy actually in the number two spot, followed by the Ottomans. Ming will go back up to number one if they ever embrace the Renaissance, followed by the Commonwealth, Burgundy, Austria, then Great Britain. And believe it or not, uh, without the trade to bankroll them in 1618, we have a total of zero colonies in the New World. In fact, a couple of the colonizers are actually getting bonked. Castile has been destroyed by France, um, and it actually looks like Great Britain has as well, with France having some lands down there near Wessex. With all of the trade going through Champagne, it definitely appears that France is making the best of it. The Ottomans are also having a good go at it as well, all the way down into the Horn of Africa and well into Arabia. We do have a Persia that has formed, which I always appreciate formable tags. Sweden has eaten Norway and Denmark, the Commonwealth has eaten everybody around them, and Russia, oh my gosh, Russia. Russia is certainly having a good game. Uh, and then you look over into China and you see Korea, and even Japan, Korea controls a very large portion of that. The various warlord clans of China do not stand a chance against the Koreans, apparently. The Indian tags have compartmentalized. We have a Delhi, Bahamanis, Bengal, and Sindh over on the west. And it appears that uh, Transoxiana has become Timmy. We do have a little bit of colonization going down in the Cape of Good Hope, but um, this isn't Portugal. This is Kilwa. And hilariously, we have Sweden and Norway splitting Iceland. These poor guys do not get their own identity. They can't even decide between Swedish and Norwegian. We've got 100 years left and uh, some interesting border changes are going on. You're gonna notice a couple of things over here in the New World and a uh, couple things in other places. Songhai making their presence known, taking over a bit of Iberia, splitting it with France and a couple of other random tags like Granada and Galicia. The two Sicilies has formed, taking over some land in the Balkans as well as in Greece. And France has gone revolutionary and is doing pretty good, but uh, they are also sharing a very decent border with a very decent commonwealth. Salzburg has proclaimed Gos Salzburg, and Bohemia is still here, but they're getting a nice hug from the Poles. I made a joke about it, but uh, Iceland is indeed Iceland now. And also this province over here is also Iceland. Aside from that, the rest of Scandinavia is Commonwealth Russia, but there is still a Gotland. Ottomans are not having a good game, but uh, Ethiopia and Persia are both doing pretty good. Dakan has formed and is fighting back the Bengalis. And somebody who is not getting pushed back is Korea, the new emperor of China. Very based. Ming is like 10 different little enclaves trapped within Korea's borders, so yeah, they're not doing well. And Japan and Ainu exist in a little bit of border gore over here with Korea. Malacca has taken over most of Indonesia and is now the major power in the area. And Vietnam is now Cambodia slash Siam slash Malaysia. But Russia is doing quite good and uh, the eagle-eyed among you would have noticed something interesting in the new world. These flags on this island, do you guys know what these flags are? Those are the flag of the Russian West Indies. The richest trade note in the world is Lhasa, which is in Tibet. <laughs> Bengal, Krakow, and Chengdu are all very powerful as well. Vienna, Deccan, Timbuktu, Crimea, and Nippon. So it seems kind of random. You would expect it to be the opposite, like the beginning trade nodes in 1444 in the regular game would be the best, but they're really not. Korea is filthy rich over here though, making so much money. 84 ducats per month just from trade alone. And with 100 years left, we have a very strong revolutionary France with the Commonwealth competing directly with France. And then a distant third is Russia with Korea being the actual number one if they embrace the institution. Then there's a bit of a drop off to Bengal and a huge drop off 
to Great Britain, then Persia, and in the eighth spot is Bohemia with under 400 development. And in the end, the new world is, um, it's, it's pretty empty, to be honest with you. France decided to get a little bit late to the game, but uh, get involved nonetheless, though Russia and Canada, new Russia, definitely are the dominant powers over here on the East Coast. Russia controls the entirety of the Caribbean. And if you had Russian Columbia on your bingo card, you can cross that one off. And right next to Kilwa, whose capital is uh, in South Africa, we have Russian South Africa. Congo decided to go beast mode and uh, conquer the entirety of this area, Madagascar, all the way up into the Horn. And uh, Persian Horn of Africa over here looks pretty weird, as does Sindh with their capital over here in Yemen. Ah yes, Medina, the holy city, the capital of the Persian Empire. Because between Korea, Russia, and um, Circassia, Persia has lost. I don't know how this happened, but Russia's got some land over here. I assume Salzburg went monarchy and got personal union or something like that. And also hilariously, the revolutionary Two Sicilies is up here in Venice slash Slovenia. Songhai lost the majority of their development to uh, the revolutionary French, but seeing Greece and Albania does put a smile on my face. But uh, north of Albania, you can see here that Kosovo is Russia. And the Commonwealth continued to dominate, pushing Ottomans out of Anatolia and giving Bohemia a nice big hug. Hope Man is based out of a giant fort in Ravensburg. And England was split between the French and uh, the Scots. And in what might be the worst timeline here, it turns out that Iceland is not Sweden or Norway. It is, in fact, France. And because it's a Chubert vid, Bengal did really good, but to conformed, and that's always cool with me, and Korea maintained the mandate and did pretty solid, finishing very strong. Also finishing quite strong is Malacca, getting most of Indonesia and the Philippines, as well as Malaysia, into their, uh, their sphere. Ooh, and I almost missed this. Russian Australia and Russian Australia. That's pretty sweet. And if you really had to question it, yes, Russia is the number one great power, but France is really close to number one. Dropping down a little bit, you got Korea, and then, uh, and from there, it's a pretty big drop off. You got Bengal, Dakon, and then everyone else has under a thousand development with Congo, Circassia, rounding out the number seven, which is incredible, and then Scotland with 270 development. Military hegemon is Korea, but uh, they don't have any points in it. And somebody had economic, I think it was France, but I think they just lost the war to the Commonwealth. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. The religious map mode is uh, pretty boring, to be honest with you, but there's a couple of interesting things. Turns out Anglican was the Church of Scotland in this timeline. There is one Protestant province, I think, in the entire world, and it's here in Venice, but uh, no tags that follow it. But there is some reformed. And you take a look here and you see Orthodox Bohemia, which is weird. But then you look at, um, yeah, yeah, th that makes a little bit more sense. Also, I just want to take a second to acknowledge that um, the Regency is for um, semen. Aside from that, it's all Catholic and uh, Orthodox. Orthodox had a very strong finish here, even a little bit of land over here. And of course, there's quite a bit in the New World. Orthodox Colombia, truly the most strange timeline. Aside from that, you've got a lot of Shias over here in the Middle East, and it looks like Sunnis actually did not have a good game. It's all Orthodox down under. And the culture map mode is actually a bit of a mess over here. The Lombards were mostly pushed out of Lombardy and are now Ossetans. The Gascons pushed the Basque out of the Basque area and uh, are now Gascons. Muscovite has pushed well into Scandinavia. The Finns are no more. And apparently the Baltics are also Novgorodian. The Poles range all the way from Lubeck all the way down into Bacchus or whatever down here in Carpathia. We have one Muscovite province down here in South Africa. Very nice. And of course, most of the New World is Muscovite with a little bit of Burgundian in there with some Muscovite over here in Oceania. And very interestingly, actually, Sino-Korean, uh, a culture that was added a while ago, but you don't really see it. The Koreans, since they took the mandate, switched over from being their own independent culture group to being part of the Chinese group, which is really sweet. I don't know if I have ever seen the AI do that, so that's actually really cool. And of course, we have to take a look at the trade nodes. Bengal, the number one trade node in the world, with Krakow and then Lhasa over in Tibet in a close third. Chengdu in China and Dakon in southern India, with Champagne holding up the French. These are really random, honestly. I don't see a rhyme or reason to why trade is the way that it is. But then again, I'm really used to vanilla, where uh, trade is pretty predictable, all things considered. So what was your guys' favorite thing of the video? Make sure you let us know in the comments below. And if you have a suggestion of a video you'd like to see, make sure you leave that below as well. If you enjoyed the video, like it and subscribe to the channel for plenty more to come. If you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter, they're all linked in the description. If you want early access to these videos, you can check out my Patreon. That's a great way to support and also get early access to every video that comes out on the channel. But that's all I've got for you for this one. Till next time, stay chill.